All right, now let's do a welfare analysis of how our market is doing for us when there are some changes or shift in it. Basically, this is trying to establish who is better off for participating in the market and how much better off are they. And in particular, you look at it as total welfare or total surplus, or you look at it in terms of the consumers versus the producers. Okay, so for this example, we've got, we'll stick with our previous market quantity of natural gas, We're going, looking for other sources of energy here, and our price. You have your demand curve and you have your supply curve. Okay, we have our original price equilibrium and quantity equilibrium. Now, as we said before, we'll just stick with our demand example that it's extremely cold winter, so our demand shifted to the right. Okay, we are demanding more. Our taste and preferences has increased. So we have a new price equilibrium and a new quantity equilibrium. Okay, we're going to look at our benefit analysis here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L. All right, so if I'm looking at consumer surplus before, consumer surplus is the benefit to consumers for participating or the extra joy that they get for participating in the market, right? So we have consumer surplus before, producer surplus before, total surplus before. Now then after that we have consumer surplus af after, producer surplus after, total surplus after. Okay, so consumer surplus is defined as the area below the demand curve and above the price because these are all these individuals that were better off by participating. The price was here at this level established by the equilibrium, but this individual here, if you think of this as individual, collective, or the sum of all the individuals that are willing and able to participate in the market, in this market for natural gas, they were gonna pay a very, very high price for their natural gas. They benefited by the distance between this price and this price. So we want the area below the demand curve and above the price. So before, the answer would be the area of A, C. Okay, producer surplus is defined by all these producers that were willing and able to sell it at a price lower than the equilibrium price, but they were able to charge the market equilibrium price. So they benefited by the difference between it. So the sum of that would be the area of the triangle E, above the supply curve and below the price. Total surplus would just be all of that, looking at, oops, looking at the market as a benefit to everybody, consumers and pr producers, so it would be A, C, E, okay? When we look at after this increase of demand, more people are willing and able to buy natural gas at every price. They are willing to buy more because it is an extremely cold winter. So now we have an increased demand, the curve shifted. Now our price has been has increased, okay? So now we have our new demand curve here and our price here. The area below the demand curve and above the price would be the area of A and B, okay? Producers have actually increased their surplus a little bit here. Now we have the area below the price and above the supply curve. So their area is C, D, E. Okay, total surplus now is all of this area below the demand curve and above the supply curve, this huge triangle. So it would be A, B, C, D, and E. Okay, change in total surplus. What was gained? What's the difference? We actually have an addition, a positive area gained of B plus D, okay? More are participating in the market because of the experience of the cold winter, okay? And who in particular is better off? The producers are. 
If we had a loss, we would do the same thing, except for our demand curve would shift to the left or our supply curve would shift to the left. Okay. Whenever these other letters are out here, the only reason they're there is to confuse you and to show, make sure you understand what to look for. Remember, underneath the demand curve and above the price, above the supply curve and under the price.